We're here at Spainsfield Farm today to take a look at all the progress that's been going on lately. So Spainsfield Farm uh, is an upland farm. It was originally in Weirdale, so it stood just above Stanhope, between Stanhope and Rookup. And we took it down where it began in 2016 with our in-house team. It was taken down stone by stone. Uh, all the internals came out and then it was transported here to the museum where it's been rebuilt. Uh, so Spainsfield, as it stood originally on the hillside in Weirdale, it didn't have a roof, but there was a lot of the walls there. We had a really good idea of what the building originally looked like. So as it was taken down, it was all really recorded in a great deal of detail. Uh, those plans were brought back to the museum, which allowed us to replicate it as it was on the hillside there. We've used as much of the original material as possible. We've obviously had to match in in places where things were missing, particularly with the roof. We've uh, used as much of the original stone roof as we could, but we've, we've matched in where things were missing to create the, the full set of roof that we have now. So we took a lot of the internal woodwork and as well which has gone back in things like doors and one of the quirky features which can be seen still on the building is the wonky chimney pot as it originally was on Spainsfield as it stood on the hillside there. So Spainsfield is now standing just above our 1900s pit village. It's positioned on a hillside as it was, so it was quite isolated as it stood in just above Stan up on that, that hillside there. Um, there wasn't much around it, so we've tried to replicate that as much as we could here to create that isolated feeling. So Spainsfield itself as a building is Georgian. Uh, the original stonework or parts of it at least date to the 1700s. There's been a lot of work over the years and additions to it. It was lived in up until the 1950s where a lot of these farms began to get abandoned after changing farming practices and regulations across Weirdale. So the hope is with Spainsfield that we'll be able to show life in Weirdale and farming life around the 1950s as it was. So we worked really closely with the Rain family who were the last inhabitants of this tenant farm and we uh, did oral histories with the family members to collect their memories of how Spainsfield had been in the 50s and the 40s uh, so that we could bring this building to life. So it's been a while since our last update of Spainsfield and lots has been going on since then as you can see. So the stonework's up, the uh, roof is all on, all the rainwater goods are on and we've began some of the decoration and painting so all of the external timber work is done in a traditional linseed oil paint and then the in-house team have been really busy on the inside so we'll take a little look at what they've been up to. Hello, nice to see you. I haven't seen you for quite some time. Um, last time I saw you the house was so high but here we are still stonemasons, me and Peter. We've become line plasters since the stonemasonry ran out. We're, st we're standing now in the big kitchen, or well, used to be that parlour really. Um, we've got a staircase in now, but originally there wasn't a staircase, there would have been a ladder upstairs, which I can show you in a minute. But over here we had the, the range. When we took the range down, it had a bread oven in the back, brick bread oven. Um, so that was the outside wall obviously at the time. So this was the only room of the farmhouse, the main room of the farmhouse. Um, so we had the range, we had the bread oven, and then what they did is they extended a little bit in the middle, they joined it up and made a smaller kitchen. This range, well, this, this range then became a kind of place where they washed, they washed clothes because it had a big pot. Um, this was, obviously these are the pictures of when we took it down. This is next door in the small kitchen, which I'll show you in a minute. As I was saying, originally there wasn't a staircase in here. Um, there was a ladder upstairs with a hatch here, which you can see on that picture there. Um, and that was the room there. Was, as the wall bends here, that's where the ladder went up. So obviously it's when they've put that in, they've closed all that off and we've now plastered it that way. Uh, as we go through into the smaller kitchen, which was an extension after the farmhouse so to make the house bigger to have joined the smaller kitchen so as I was saying this this was the outside wall this was where the bread oven was found this was the door out to the back which is now the pantry this was all open so what they've done is they've joined the middle bit they've put a new range in here so this becomes a smaller kitchen smaller kitchen area which gives them more room for scope. They then had a pantry which was in here. Uh, since, since, since it's all been done out anyway, we've finished the stonework um, and we decided to do the line plastering. So the process of the line plaster obviously is you've got your stone walls um, and they're all rough and ready. 
you put a double note coat on first, which brings it kind of, so your voids aren't so deep, so that the drying out period becomes pretty much the same all the way around. A double out coat, then you put a scratch coat on, which kind of brings it and levels it a bit further. We use these as guides to kind of get the levels and the heights. So we work in between these, which gives us time to move around. We then pull them out and plaster that up. Um, you've then got another coat on top of that, which is another scratch coat. This coat goes on, so this is the third coat. This gets rubbed down and lightly scratched this time, which is that finish there. So that's the final head coat. So all of these are head coats. That's the final head coat where we then now put the line putty on, which is the finish. It's two, three mil, four mil um, coats of line putty, which gives you the final finish, which seals the whole um, line plaster. Now line plaster obviously is needed because we've built it with lime. Uh, there's no cavities. So if we didn't use lime plaster, lime breathes inside now, it'll breathe and it'll move. Now, if you put normal plaster on it, it'll get soaked and wet. It'll be drenched within or it'll draw all the damp into the house, so it's got to breathe all the time. So that's why you put the line plaster on. And then, as you can see, that this is the first finish of the final putty coat. And then Peter's now continuing the final finish, and that's when he finishes his corners off around the windows. It then seals itself with a metal float, and that's your finish. We bought in the line mix from a place in Wales. Um, so it come in big dumpy bags, so we mixed it up on site, brought it to the walls and on it went. It's been a labour intensive struggle, but we're quite happy with the results. So as we're outside, we'll go and check out the barns. Eh? Um, first of all, you'll have the amusement, <laughs> what everybody gets amused at anyway, it's the um, ham and egg barn, right? So originally there was a pig downstairs, there was chickens upstairs. Now for the chickens to access this particular farm, they had the invention of putting a spiral staircase in the corner for them. There was a... There was the, the ladder up there, which you'll see the stone sticking out on, too, which came to a ledge here. And then from there, it spirals around inside the wall and brings you out on, top, on the top floor. So that's, the hens used to live up there, the pig was downstairs, hence ham and egg house. Um, this was one of the big Milton barns. Um, obviously they had a lot of sheep here, so they had to rear sheep as well. So they would bring the sheep in, um, what have you. These are the original floor joists that were there. Uh, original pine ones which we brought back. Um, from here, you go into the main barn, which is, they'll probably have a cow or so in here, or they could have had a horse. They could have had a, a horse that used to pull the milk um, churns around with you. There's a dairy inside of there, which is where they either used their, made their own milk and stored it in there, but they did, there was talk of them leaving um, a dairy churn up on the top, top road for people to use, um, whether this, obviously it was an extra form of income for them. Um, so as we go into the main barn, so this is basically, you'll have stores along here, the public will be able to come in through here. This is the original door, dates back for 1600s or something, in fact, even further than that. So that's gone back on. Uh, all the original lintels have been put back in. These all, they were all taken out, I know, because I took them out. <laughs> um, since previously, we've had a, an owl nesting with, uh, in the lockdown, it had three chicks. So we've now put owl access <laughs> to their future barn. So, so next year when they come and they want uh, somewhere to lay, lay their eggs, We've got the barn for them. It's nice to have a barn owl in a barn, isn't it? So we've got two accesses for them. We've got one here and one in the egg house, as you can see. So as you go out here, obviously you've got, you've got a place here where the cows will be. And there's going to be a fence around the outside. You've got the start of the outside toilet there, which we'll be putting up as soon as we finish the plastering. Um, this is actually the original sink that was at Spainsfield. We brought that back as well. That collects water for the animals at the minute. We're gonna have, there was a stream that used to run down past the farm, all the way down here. Now Mary used to, Mary and our family used to get the water for drinking water and washing and what have you. And then it flowed past the back of their toilet. 
and it obviously washed out whatever came out the back of the toilet. So you're better off drinking from this end than that end. <laughs> right, and so as we're looking up, we'll see the old stone roof. Uh, we saved, I'd probably say about 60% of the slate. Uh, a lot of it was laminated and obviously when we got here, this particular roof was, it was collapsed and they were all smashed. We got 60% of the slates coming back. We brought them back and they were stored and they've been used. They've also been mixed in with slate we had on site and we happened to get a little bit from Matthew Charlton's. Um, it was mixed in, it's all exactly the same slate from the same area, so it, it looks perfect, I think. Um, the lads, uh, Hodgson Sears was a local firm that came and gave us a hand doing it. Um, then we learned from them all about roofing, slate roofing with uh, oak pegs and what have you. You know, it was, uh, it was an interesting, you know, iron in the fire, as they say. Now this is a strange piece of stone. This is believed to have come from either a bastle or a castle further up the valley. It's a completely different type of stone than this and it would never have been used in a farm. So it was pinched, the doorway was pinched and it was used. As you can see, at the time it was, it's been pinned because it was cracked. So it was pinned with a thingy and a lead, lead with a big metal clip in, which we've put back in, the same, same as. So that, that's, that's not of this kind of farm and area. So where's that come from? I'm not quite sure. As I was talking about the uh, extensions or how it grew, when we took it down, um, you could see various parts of what was there first. As you can see, as I was saying before, that was the main wall. This wasn't here. Can you see the straight joint that runs up there? That shows you that this was the farmhouse. This wasn't here, so this was joined. And you can see a straight wall, a straight joint running up here, which only goes three quarters of the way. Now that three quarters of the way was the barn that ran that way. You see, so it had a farmhouse and a barn. Then they joined this in the middle and they added an extra, an extra layer on top of that barn, which actually ran on the top of this barn here because that roof there ran right through the wall. The slates ran right through the wall. So you can see as you took it down, how they just dropped that barn on top of that one and that up there and that up there and that's how they extended it. You know, it was, it was yet again, it's taking the building down. You learn its secrets, don't you? Um, but we've put them all back so we can still tell that story. Well, originally when we first came, these were the first two buildings we took down. Um, this is a cat house, that's a pigsty with, yet again, as you see the window in the side is a chicken house. So the chickens would live upstairs and the pig would live downstairs, so yet another ham and egg house, isn't it? The cat house was all dropped down. Um, what a cat house is? Well, it could have just been a coal house, because there is a window in the back. Um, uh, and the cat house is basically all it is is it's lesser quality coal and you mix it with clay and you putty it together and you make blocks to burn on a fire it could be stored in there that's what would have been in the earlier days when they didn't have the access of coal you know but then it probably became a coal house but then it was a storehouse basically all it is is if I can open it I mean, you can see where the, the gate is at the back, so something was filled in from there. It was just an open door. Uh, the pigsty, which is going to be a pigsty, which is in here. Um, and this was the hole to the hens. So you've got, you've got ham, you've got eggs, you've got beef, you've got milk. What more do you want? Eh? So if any of you know Spain's field, you'll probably not recognize this um, porch on the side. What it is, is it's for visitor access. Now, if you go up to a lot of the farms up in Weardale, you'll see that they've got, or they've put porches on the side. It's just where you took your boots off and you went in the house, easy access. We have reused that story because we need access in and access out. This is the main thoroughfare. Down here will be where you come into the building. Um, all disabled access, of course, as well. So you've got in the building and out the building. So there's that constant flow, right? So we've, we've, we've used that to help us out. It's, it's, it's an original, it's not original to Spain's field, but it, it is used up in the Weardale area. So that's what we've got there. <laughs> 